All right, men, we pick up here uh, from video four in the ongoing saga of repairing the old Peter Paul's fuel system from gummed up car gas. Uh, now, this is going to be the end of the series. This is going to be video five, uh, the end of the series on these repairs. So sit back and open an adult beverage and Come along with us and let's see how it all works out. So I'm going to check these plugs. Boy, these things are <laughs> auto light. <laughs> auto light. What are those tractor sp spark plugs? I'm not sure. Auto lights. There's only one champion in here. This is an M41E. All the rest of them are auto light. <clears throat> I don't know if those are tractor plugs or what are they? <clears throat> or what they are. And I don't know if they've got a resistor in there or not. So I'm going to kind of check these out here a little bit. Let's see what I can see. Oops. If they have no resistor, it should go out to zero, and that one did. Went out to zero. And that one did. That one zeroed. And these plugs, boys, they are gummed up. Oh man, they're in a terrible state. That one zeroed out. Yeah, come on. Alright, that one zeroed out. I don't know if you can see that. See how gummed up and varnished up that is? It's terrible. Looks like somebody poured varnish in there. It's that, that's that car gas, that bad car gas. All right, here's the champion. I know this is an aircraft plug, non-shielded. And it zeroed out. It should, uh, if it doesn't have a resistor, it would, it would read low or down to zero. I'm not getting anything out of this. Of course, I'm going to clean these plugs. I've got a solution of Avgas 100 low lead that I've put some Berryman's in, okay. I'll clean them and then uh, we'll do this again. I've got a feeling like we've got some I would rather have the champion plugs in this engine. I've got a new set, <clears throat> brand new set, still in plastic. But I was kind of saving those plugs for, uh, for another project. Uh, 
Well, here's the thing. These plugs are in terrible shape. They're just absolutely filthy. I, I hope you can see that. They're just nasty. Gummed up, varnished up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in this solution of Avgas and Berryman's. And I'm gonna let those babies soak oh maybe a couple of days. And then really put the old clean Ola to it. Oh look at that. Can you see that fuel? turning filthy. Yeah, I'm sure you can. These poor old plugs, these auto light plugs, I don't know where in the world they came from. They may very well be aircraft plugs, but I've never seen them. I've always dealt with champions never seen auto light plugs in a Continental 65. So we're going to set that aside for a moment. And uh, here, are the uh, crush washers that came off of those spark plugs. What we're going to do is we're going to anneal them. Now Champion, uh, their official stance is you may be able to anneal the, uh, the washers, but they've been used already and you, uh, they won't be able to crush anymore. And it makes sense, but good gravy. <coughs> Throughout the years, people have reused those washers over and over and over and over again. So, and without even annealing them. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I will anneal these and then we'll put it on the airplane and see how it how it goes. Boy, even these things are filthy. Have mercy. Boy. Okay, so I'm going to clean those and then we'll get back with you when we start the annealing process. Okay, alright, here we go. Oh yes. Now we just get it a dull red. Set it aside and let it cool off in, in uh, you know, pretty calm air. Once it cools off, it will be annealed and it will be soft again. Doesn't take the old acetylene torch Arinsky very long to get it hot. Now we were talking about people over the years have reused these uh, crush washers over and over and over again. 
My old flight instructor, Charlie Wilkerson, out at uh, Sycamore Strip, A&W Aircraft. It stood for Arnold and Wilkerson. They became partners after World War II. <clears throat> Arnold uh, didn't remain a partner, but the name stayed. And Charlie was one of the best pilots and mechanics that I have ever had the privilege of knowing. He taught me how to fly. I learned, uh, I worked for him for a couple of years, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> paying for my flying lessons. I was just a kid, 15, 16, 17 years old. But this is how he taught me to do it. Now, he was an old, he was an old timer. He came from uh, out of World War II. He was a uh, waste gunner on a B-17. Man, that that character, old Charlie, could tell some stories, buddy. But anyway, this is how he taught me to do it: just to kneel the things and use them over again. And, uh, of course, now Champion, you can go on their website and they'll tell you, <laughs> don't ever reuse a uh, crush washer because it's already been crushed. And it makes a little sense. But once you anneal them, they're, they're still viable. They may not be, you may not have the crush that you once had, but they will still... Uh, they'll still do the job. So anyway, I've, that's the way I've always done it. Uh, it's the way I was taught. Uh, from the old timers, you know, and, and good gravy, it worked for, for years and years and years. It's always worked for me. So... You know, pays your money and uh, takes your chances. Have mercy. Look how filthy that solvent has gotten. And it's only been about 10 minutes. I'm going to drop the old crush washers in there. Let them soak. I'm going to let that soak for a day or two. Then we'll clean them up, dig out any uh, lead that may be up in there. Putting a little bit of adhesive on there. It's Loctite stick and seal for that that piece of gasket that broke off. Okay, we're going to bolt our carburetor back to our uh, air box.
Pretty tight in there, boys. Pretty tight. Okay, putting the cotter pins in. I could use a little more light out here. Boys, I'll tell you what. There is not very much room down there between that air intake and the bottom of the carburetor. But there's plenty of room for cussing, I can guarantee you that. be a doozy here. But then again, it may be the only one that, that cooperates. Come on, babe. Good for daddy. Come on. <laughs> there we go. There we are. Okay. All right. Now there's one more. I don't know how that got broken, but it did. Let's 
safety wire there. So I'm going to have to re safety that. Come on, baby. I had a lot more tolerance for this kind of stuff when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was younger. But then again, I was having a lot of help from, let's see, what was it I was drinking back in those days? And, Everybody raised Cain about it. <clears throat> uh, Carling. Carling Black Label Light. No, Carling's Best Black Label Light. <laughs> and everybody wanted to know why I bought the cheap beer. Well, it was simple. And you've got to get acclimated to cheap beer, believe me. But I bought the cheap beer because nobody else was buying beer. <laughs> and I would bring in a 12-pack and everybody would come over and grab one. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then complain about the cheap beer. <laughs> Followers. Yeah, I believe that'll work. Did I tell you, don't go and buy the Harbor Freight safety wire pliers? Well, if I didn't, let me tell you now, don't go buy these things. They're not really that good.
Okay. Everything is safety wired. Everything is looking good. May rub this down with a little bit of alcohol and spray it with some black uh, enamel. That's just uh, uh, zinc chromate primer. And as such, it'll soak up oil and fuel and water, all kinds of contaminants. So I may just go in there and spray it with a little black enamel. So there we are. We put a little enamel on it. Whoops. Missed a spot. Hopefully that will keep fuel and oil from soaking into the uh, finish. Well, we know it will. <laughs> 